First, they failed to warn the public about dangerously high levels of E. coli in Lake of the Ozarks. Then they failed to warn swimmers about sewage pollution at Castlewood State Park. Tonight, the I-Team's Lisa Zygman will have you asking whether those running Missouri's Department of Natural Resources are misleading the public about hazardous lead levels at one of the state's most popular parks. Lisa? Mike, St. Joe State Park is the third largest park in Missouri, attracting more than 700,000 visitors last year. It's located in the heart of the old lead belt, about 70 miles south of St. Louis in St. Francis County. St. Joe State Park is a paradise for many off-road vehicle enthusiasts because of the wide open sand flats. But that is not sand. The swirling dust being inhaled and ingested is actually lead tailings left over from more than a century of mining. The area is covered with an estimated 75 million tons of lead tailings. According to the EPA, the only safe level of lead is zero. But recent tests show hot zones at the park. Levels top 1,000 parts per million. The greatest concern is for children, especially those younger than seven. During an, a hot summer day, this area is just one gigantic big dust cloud. Dr. John Martin of St. Louis County loved riding ATVs with his son, Alex. He knew there was lead, but figured it was safe because the state's website said it is. When, when you remove lead from houses, you know, they, they seal the houses up and, and vacuum all the particles out of the air. Down there, you know, everybody's exposed to it, even the youngest kids. In 1993, the federal government declared the area a Superfund or toxic site and made it a national priority. While parts of the park have been cleaned up. You're just eating all that dust. The dusty tailings have not. There are motocross events there where they have five, six, seven-year-old children riding in the dust. And when they're done, they, they look like pig pen from Peanuts. Martin's nephew, Derek, tore up the track at a motocross event. You can see the lead-laced particles in the air, on his clothes, and by the end of the race, all over his mouth. Honestly, if you went out and rode a bike through it one time, it's probably not a big deal. If you're out there a lot, that's a whole different issue. While Governor Jay Nixon's Department of Natural Resources says the area is safe, his health department says parts are not. Is there a risk? Certainly there is a risk. There's always a risk. There's always, there's always going to be a risk. But that is not what the Department of Natural Resources tells the public. Its website statement on lead issued this year quotes an outdated six-year-old report saying risks associated with recreational exposures from off-road vehicle riding were within acceptable levels. People will read that statement and take it at face value. They'll, they'll trust the state. According to the EPA and Missouri Department of Health, that 2003 risk assessment was flawed because it never considered those most at risk, children under seven. That's why in 2008, a new massive sampling was ordered. And it's that 2008 sampling that is now considered the gold standard for highlighting potential risks. The DNR doesn't mention the 2008 sampling, and no one from that agency would agree to an on-camera interview. Instead, a spokesperson issued a statement. The DNR puts park visitor health and safety first. Since 1993, the department has conducted a number of tests, and none has shown unacceptable levels of risk to park staff on-site residents or recreational off-road vehicle users. Public documents from the EPA, the Agency for Toxic Substances, and even the DNR show that statement isn't true. Only after I questioned the accuracy of the DNR statement did it issue a new one, an apparent about face. Studies have shown that occasional off-road riding is acceptable, but more frequent riding could subject visitors to unacceptable levels of risk. That is a concern. While working on this story, DNR statements have gone from it is safe to it is a concern. Just today, I received more conflicting information. The agency insists this sign is prominently displayed in bathrooms, around the campground, and in an office. We didn't see them, and Dr. Martin says he's never seen one. 
but what they say is the strongest warning yet. It says there is a risk to children under six and they should not play in the ORV area. This evening, DNR changed its website and is no longer stating the lead levels are safe. Now we do know that all we're trying to do here is get to the truth, but a lot of people have been emailing you concerned that the park could close because they do enjoy the park. They love the park. They don't want this park to close and not one public official is saying close the park. All the agencies say they are trying to do is to figure out a way to clean up the hot zones while keeping the park open for everyone to enjoy. EPA has a plan, but it would be up to DNR and the Doe Run Company to pay for that plan. And it could get expensive. Well, it, it could get expensive. They can do nothing. Uh, they can put up some more signs that people can actually see so parents can make an informed decision and, right. and decide whether they want their children, especially those under six, riding in that area. But right now, we're not hearing from them. No one's agreeing to sit down and talk with me. All right, Lisa, thanks very much.